All right, here we go. The MA3 timecode crash course. All right, let's get started here. There's a lot to cover and we don't want this to take too long. Okay, so I already created a little timecode section here. I brought up a sequence, a little 3D monitor and my playback. Uh, for this example, I created a main list um, and then I created a little cyan uh, temp fader as well that we will be using. Okay. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open our timecode view. This is the main um, uh, part of timecode that you will be using to edit and uh, record and play back your timecode. And you can view that here in all the events as we'll see momentarily. The other thing I'm going to want to open is, uh, well, there are a couple things you can see, timecode slots and timecodes. We're going to be using timecode slot one and uh, internally generated timecode for this example. And I'll show you guys how to change that in a second. Uh, if you're on a console or maybe you don't want to use internally generated timecode, um, you can set that in user um, preferences and also um, in the output configuration. If you're on a console, you could um, set like your SIMT mode and the ports and things that that's supposed to come in. Okay, so let's say we're going to create our timecode here. Uh, number one, I'm just going to long press like we're familiarized with. We've already created a timecode. Uh, let's label this. Uh, main. And let's select it. Okay, so we can now see our time code uh, in our time code view. It's labeled main. Let's go to the setup icon. Okay, so you'll notice once we're in setup, there are a couple things uh, that change. Uh, you, we have a record button here and a couple more kind of uh, functionality things. We also have an, an, our encoder bar has changed to match these. So we have a larger uh, record button and we can also uh, go to events, times and adjust things. We can use these to edit um, things later. We will see that momentarily. Okay, let's just get started here. I'm gonna start recording this time code. You can see it's turned red, we are recording. And uh, when we're ready, you can see in the 3D here, we're gonna see this main list. So let's just hit go on this first item here. Uh, let's run our next queue. Let's run the next one down and then we'll run the next one amazing and let's stop recording okay uh, we have now officially stopped recording we can go back to the start uh, we can go and we can now see it is playing back our looks uh, as we exactly as we recorded them in the time we recorded them and it's playing back in our sequence as well this is good okay let's pause that and let's go back to the start. Okay, now um, let's kind of talk about the organization of this a little bit before we start adding in our temps. You can see over here on the left, we have a couple sections, we have track groups, and then we have tracks. So track groups, think of this kind of like as the, um, or I think of this, you, you can think of them as you have whatever you want, but I think of these as the what of an object. Um, I will have one for um, lighting, one for video, one for you know pyro and effects or whatever. And then individual tracks within that are automatically created or you can create them yourself uh, based on the sequences that you are creating uh, and applying in here. So uh, you can create new tracks and you can create new track groups. Don't get these confused, I did that. And, uh, I was very confused because I had my lights group that contained, you know, other like video information and stuff that I don't want. Okay, uh, let's re hit record again. And I'm going to add in our temp uh, cyan here in a second. Okay, let's hit that. Let's hit the temp. It flashed it. Flashed it again. Uh, this temp only has uh, color data though. It does not have um, any sort of like intensity data, which is why I didn't flash it here because um, yeah, it would not do anything. Okay, awesome. So now we have a couple more looks that we could play back. And we have our, our temps in there as well. Very exciting. And all looks good. Okay, uh, we could also rename this if I just wanted this to say main and this uh, this could be temp. Okay, and now the other thing you can see over here, the play or record, uh, this essentially if like will let you lock this. So like if you don't want to change uh, to record anything more to this track, you could lock it. Um, and that way we can't record anything to this track anymore. Uh, you can also restrict uh, the rights to play back if you didn't want like a certain um, uh, group to or track to play back for some reason. Okay, now let's go over here to the, you can see under view mode, there are a couple options. Uh, you have text, 
timeline, which we were just in, or both. Both is what you really want to be in for a lot of stuff. Uh, this essentially allows you to see everything um, that uh, is in our queue here. And um, we can adjust things like the exact time, like if we wanted to move them like to exactly eight seconds or something like that. Um, we can also, uh, you can see we can select our different items here. We can move them using the time column here. You can see I can move it uh, if I want it to trigger earlier. Um, also, you can use this event column to quickly snap to the events in the selected um, track. Uh, the other thing that is really helpful in MA3 is the um, the time code uh, is that they've included something in time code called markers. Uh, let's let's take a look at uh, how to add one of those. Uh, let's say we want to add a marker here. Uh, I'm gonna label this start. Okay, you can now see over here we have a marker. Um, I want to change its duration. Let's make it 60 seconds, and you can now see it's do that. Actually, I want it to be 15 seconds. Um, Change of plans, 10. Um, this allows you to quickly label things um, within uh, the like within the track. So like you can label the start of the song, the um, you know any musical changes just helps divide them up. You can add um, you know um, a color if you wanted to or something, and it would color that section so you can quickly tell this is the start. You can go here. Um, you could add another one, end, right, and then um, you know adjust that until you uh, you get what you want kind of thing. And this, this that's just like an organization thing. The other thing, uh, the you can use the plus minus keys to um, you know uh, change things around. If you wanted to just delete quickly delete a queue or something in there, you can use the, uh, the cut and um, copy in addition to the paste tools, uh, just as they are used throughout the other um, uh, you know parts of MA3. Uh, yeah, that is the uh, that's pretty. It's pretty simple. People get daunted by time code, but it's really it's really not that complicated. Um, yeah, and uh, that that's the MA3 time code crash course. Of course, there's a lot more than what we, what we talked about here. Obviously, if you go to see Taylor Swift or Billie Eilish in concert, uh, the time codes will be crazy, and they'll be like you know 15 tracks or something, and tons of temps and faders and all that kind of stuff. But really, just start with a main list, maybe a temp or something, and then just kind of start adding stuff in. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can utilize this. You can connect it uh, via MIDI loop to Reaper. Um, and there's a lot of other uh, handy ways that time codes comes in useful. So yeah, hope that was helpful. Subscribe. Uh, please like this video. That's always very helpful. And um, yeah, catch you guys later.